look at these particles. Some of these could be elements, some of them are compounds, and even more specifically, some of them are molecules. The word molecule can be applied to a very specific situation. Molecules are neutral groups of atoms held together by covalent bonds. And covalent bonds are chemical bonds that involve the sharing of electrons between atoms. There are other types of bonds, like ionic and metallic bonds, but we'll talk about those later. All nonmetals, except for noble gases, are unhappy with their number of electrons. They need one or more electrons to feel content. Hydrogen has only one lonely electron in its outermost energy level, and oxygen has room for two more electrons in its outermost energy level. Atoms are smart. They figured out that if they form bonds by sharing electrons, they're happier. Aww. Okay, so they don't really have feelings. By happy, I mean they have full valence shells, which are the outermost energy levels. Nonmetals will form covalent bonds, except for the noble gases. Only a few noble gases will form bonds, and it's under some very extreme conditions. But many of these nonmetals want to form covalent bonds, and they want to form them so badly that they bond with themselves. We call those the Brinkelhoff twins. Brinkelhoff stands for bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. And they're twins because they bond to themselves, creating diatomic molecules. Di means two, atomic refers to the atoms, so this just means two of the same type of atom covalently bonded together. So each of these elements actually exists diatomically, like Br2, I2, N2, Cl2, H2, O2, and F2. The Brinkelhoff twins. Get it? The Brinkelhoff twins aren't the only molecules out there. You could combine two or more elements and get a molecular compound, like water, H2O. Remember, molecular compounds will most likely be made out of nonmetals, like hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, fluorine, and so on. Molecular compounds have some common properties. They all have relatively lower melting and boiling points than ionic compounds. They don't conduct electricity. They're flammable softer than ionic compounds, and generally, they're less soluble in water than ionic compounds. Now, even though we haven't looked at ionic compounds in depth yet, these properties can help you distinguish an ionic compound from a molecular compound. The chemical formula of a molecular compound is called a molecular formula, and it shows you how many atoms of each element a molecule contains. For example, ethane has a molecular formula of C2H6. This tells you that there are two carbon atoms, because the subscript of two applies directly to the letter to its left. There are also six hydrogen atoms. The only thing that the molecular formula doesn't tell you is how these atoms are arranged. For that, you would need to draw a structural formula or create a model. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.